This is Dr. Shannon Wong. I'm going to present a case of repeat corneal transplant where we had to do an open sky um, intraocular lens reposition and uh, iris pupilloplasty. We had to do an open sky uh, iris fixation of a posterior chamber intraocular lens as well. A little background, this patient was 63 years old and uh, decided to have a corneal transplant because she had keratoconus uh, which had uh, produced count fingers vision. The original corneal transplant was done and uh, uh, was complicated by primary graft failure despite use of Procara to try and uh, preserve the original donor. Uh, the patient also developed uh, a white cataract we decided to try to remove the cataract while the original donor cornea was healing and that cataract surgery was complicated due to the inability to clearly visualize the intraocular structures and the cataract group was removed safely but the capsular bag opened and the lens was malpositioned into the eye. It was placed into the anterior chamber angle rather than the posterior chamber. So here we remove the original donor cornea and we can see the lens implant and the haptics are indeed anterior to the iris. We proceed to trim the uh, corneal slivers that remained from the original surgery. This surgery is being done with topical and intraocular lidocaine. We also gave the patient a lid block, but we did not give them peribulbar or retrobulbar anesthetic. She is awake with conscious sedation using, I believe, 10 to 15 milligrams of oral Valium. We spend a few minutes uh, repositioning this lens from the anterior chamber angle into the ciliary body sulcus. You can see the posterior capsule behind the lens optic is irregular. There is a anterior capsule shelf, but that shelf is ill-defined. We cannot see the full extent of the anterior capsule shelf. So we place the lens uh, in the region where there seems to be adequate support using this collar button instrument. The peripheral rim of the host cornea had become inflamed and cloudy, making visualization of the pupillary border, which had become tonically dilated, uh, somewhat difficult. Uh, because we removed the original cloudy donor, we could visualize these structures, but had we tried these maneuvers in a closed system through the original donor cornea, it would have been impossible to safely perform her surgery. Here we can't even see the uh, pupillary border from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock. The lens ends up uh, centering well in the ciliary sulcus and we know our next step is to do a pupilloplasty using tenoproline. This is the patient's second, uh, actually the third trip to the operating room, the first trip being the primary, primary corneal transplant for keratoconus. That corneal transplant was done in a phacic, with the lens being phacic. Uh, the second operation was actually the cataract surgery and now this is the third operation so we wanted to make every effort to make sure we didn't have to bring this patient back to the operating room again so as I was uh, using 
the suture to do a pupilloplasty, I knew I was going to stabilize this lens implant by suturing it to the iris before the case was uh, over. I didn't want to risk the chance that this lens may become malpositioned weeks or months after surgery and that we would have to bring this patient back to the operating room a fourth time to correct uh, her condition. For this patient, I used a purse string technique where I went 360 degrees around the pupillary border with my proline suture, and then I tied it. This patient's surgery was done on September 26, 2011. At the October ASCRS American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery meeting, I saw other um, techniques of pupilloplasty, one in particular where two rows, one at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, are placed um, with, the, with the proline and using just a two-point fixation, the sutures are closed and it results in a nice uh, narrowing of the pupil with uh, a good cosmetic result. And in retrospect, um, we could have also used that technique to uh, decrease her pupillary opening. So now we've made it 360 degrees around and we tighten this suture, but we have one restriction. We do want to prolapse this optic anterior to the iris plane to stabilize the IOL while we suture it to the iris. But knowing we're going to have to prolapse the optic posterior to the iris plane, um, I realize that I can only suture this pupil uh, and tighten the suture to decrease the pupillary opening uh, by so much because if I over tighten the suture and make the pupillary opening too small, I'll have difficulty prolapsing the lens optic back into the uh, posterior chamber. So now we have the optic anterior to the iris plane. We suture or uh, tighten the suture. We use the same material to uh, fixate the each haptic of this lens implant to the iris. So we just use two throws, one for each haptic.
now that we've secured this lens by uh, to the iris, we then decide to use a uh, cyclodialysis spatula to pop the optic posterior to the iris plane. And the technique we use reminds me of uh, repairing a bicycle tire wheel or we use a tool such as the cyclodialysis spatula to position the lens posterior to the iris akin to placing the uh, rubber tire behind the bicycle rim of the bicycle wheel. Now the IOL is in perfect position, perfectly centered in the posterior chamber. We just uh, make mild adjustments to the pupillary opening and then we prepare the donor cornea for this repeat corneal transplantation. When we place the donor cornea into position, on a bed of uh, viscoelastic, um, my first impression is, hmm, this cornea look, looks cloudy already. So that was somewhat concerning, but we were already committed. We are, uh, had already taken away the original uh, donor. And uh, this cornea had good specifications preoperatively. We used 16 Tenno nylon interrupted sutures to close this cornea. And at this point, we had achieved all of our object objectives uh, using an open sky technique. We had repaired the pupil, uh, repositioned the lens, and we had replaced the uh, primary graft failure donor cornea with a second donor cornea all using an open sky technique and this patient did spectacularly uh, remaining still using just intraocular lidocaine, topical anesthetic and oral Valium. So now we see some post-operative photos. This is post-operative day one and then post-operative day uh, 21. Uh, you can see the cornea had cleared nicely. We can see a better pupil. This is intraoperatively the view traumatic uh, madriasis here, the pupil is smaller, although we may have to go back and mm, make a slight modification to the pupil at a later date. And this is a little iPhone video of how the eye looked at three weeks post-op. Thank you for your time and attention.